Retaining your players can be as important as getting new ones, and that is especially the case in the Championship when you've got clubs from the Premier League and all the way across Europe looking at your particular crop of players and trying to pick the cream out of it at relative bargain prices because they know that you're not financially in a position to have an argument there. And Leeds United have done pretty well so far. Admittedly, we lost Archie Gray, but so far we've retained Somerville despite interest, Nonto despite interest, and thus far, Jorginho Ruter in spite of Premier League interest. But there is some growing Premier League interest in Jorginho Ruter once again that could see him plied away from the club. So we're going to go into who exactly is interested in signing Ruter and why that club being interested could be especially important, how key Jorginho Ruter is to Leeds United, the price point that we're likely going to be looking at if we are going to sell him, and ultimately if he should leave the club. One other little like note to make. I've been doing a bunch of power washing and then dog bathing, so I'm still in a case of drying out, so ignore that. Also, the uh, next door neighbours are drilling directly into the wall next to the camera. So if you can hear that, I am sorry. Anyway, diving into it. And we have to start with a conversation around who exactly is interested in signing Ruter. So Brighton are back in for the Ruter move, which I think some of us saw coming. Basically, Brighton were interested in a lot of Leeds players earlier in the window. So Somerville and Ruter and I believe Nonto, which is sort of the stereotypical three. And they made a bid for £30 million earlier on in the window to try and sign Georgie from us. Now, we met that one with an immediate rejection because... Of course we would, because we're not going to sell all of our best players to the Premier League for less than they are worth, and clearly we value him at more than that. But they're back and trying to re-sign Jorginho Ruter because their manager, Fabian Hutzela, I believe, um, is looking to add some fluid, flexible, attacking, exciting football, and Georgie fits into that category pretty perfectly. He plays as a 10, he can go on either of the wings because we've seen him float around a little bit and he can at a push play in the number nine even though his finishing is a little bit iffy. But why exactly is the fact that it's Brighton important? I think that makes it a little bit more dangerous for Leeds United if we're looking to retain him because Brighton are very, very good at developing promising players. That's basically what they do, that's their expertise and there is a little bit of a chance that Jorginho might see that and see some level of temptation. See that, well, it's a move to the Premier League and it's a move where I'll probably get some minutes and develop and potentially get the big move of my career. But then again, there are a few things to consider, such as Herzler being relatively inexperienced. So last season, he only managed in the Bundesliga 2. Admittedly, took Sampaoli to 20 wins and promotion into the Bundesliga but that relative lack of experience might put Georgie off because we don't know exactly how he fits in with Brighton. And if that goes wrong, you don't want to move to a club that's a little bit chaotic. I heard that from Brendan Aronson that when it was the transition from Rads to the 49ers, from Sam Allardyce somehow to Daniel Farker, he didn't know what was happening. So just sort of said, right, okay, I think I'm going to make a move now and then judge later, which fair enough. I completely understand that from his point of view. Plus, Georgie seems to love it here, so that could also work in our favour. And we need to discuss how key Jorginho Ruter is to Leeds United and the way that we play and what it means to us going forwards. And to Leeds, in my opinion, he is absolutely essential. He has an insane level of creative output. I think he got something like 16 assists last season, and there were a lot of cases where he put an assist on a plate and someone wouldn't slot it home. The amount of work that he does from our box to their box to try and progress the ball up the pitch and put us in the best possible chance to put the ball in the back of the net is insane. There are very few other players at this club that you would see doing anything like that. Somerville, for example, is someone who, that when he's got the ball in the final third, seems to consistently be looking for a shot. And yes, that leads to him scoring lots of goals, but he doesn't bring the players around him into play. Somerville improves us by results. Jorginho improves us by improving everyone around him is the way that I've basically seen what's happened so far. And we might be able to get similar out of the likes of an Aronson this season or a Rothwell. But I don't think there is anyone that is currently in the championship or moved to the championship that is quite as effective at creating opportunities as Georgie. In addition to that, he's set for a more free role this season as well. So we've seen in the friendly so far, he'll play behind a nine, but he'll play wherever. He'll just pop up in places and defenders won't know what to do with him because someone's got to try and mark him. But if you try and mark him, then he's moved into the other space and absolutely wild. Add on to the fact that we understand him from the start now. So previously we thought he might be a bit more of a nine. Started playing last season and he turned out that he was just a really, really damn good 10. Maybe second striker-esque, but... 
The fact is we played him at nine a little bit too much last season, and I think that's a mistake that we will not be making this season. And I think he's important to the crowd too. I think you see that golden retriever Labrador sort of energy out of him, and you're like, fantastic. I'm more feeling it now because that's sort of like infectious. His good vibes spread, and I feel like that is going to matter when it comes to pushing us forward and forward and forward and forward and getting those results because the crowd are more likely to get behind a side that they actually like. So what's our price tag likely to be? Brighton are going to come back in. Brighton are going to try and sign Georgie. So what exactly is a bid going to have to be for us to be tempted? And we know it's over £30 million because reports are at the start of the window when they made a move for Georgie, it was in the £30 million region and we just said, no, that's not going to happen. With that considered, I think in all likelihood we want to profit, not just on PSR, because we would if we sold for 30 now, but just a total profit. And I would genuinely expect something similar to Cree in the region of £40 million, because that just sort of makes sense for us. Because why would we sell for less? Because I think Georgie is an equivalent player to Somerville. He just doesn't put up the same goal numbers. If he did, he wouldn't be playing in the championship anymore. But I think £40 million is probably what you can expect if there is going to be a move that ends up with Jorginho Rutter leaving Leeds United. And even then, I wouldn't actually want the sale. I had prepared a banner underneath this one saying, should he go? And I think it's very, very obvious that, in my opinion, absolutely not. He's a very creative player. He can find a pass, including from, like... There was one assist that sticks with me, where he's basically sat on the edge of our own box... And with barely a look, he just pings the ball to Crescencio Somerville about 30 yards up the pitch, and he's away, and he's gone. And that sort of thing is not what you tend to get with the average championship player. And that is something special in this division, and if we let that go, it would be a serious mistake. Add on to that, it's fun. Watching him dribble past three or four players every time he's got the ball is delicious. And yeah, he loses the ball sometimes, but football is about fun. It shouldn't all be about, yeah, but what happened with the overload in... Minute 64 and how we control possession. No, just have a nice time. Have a vibe. That's what matters to me. And it gets you more emotionally invested in the club, in the players, and that is why we care about football, really. That emotional investment keeps us coming back week in, week out, and I think Georgie this season is a very, very big part of that. But at the end of the day, like with all my videos, this is just my opinion. So I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments down below if we should sell Georgie, if you think he'll be a big part of our club next season, and ultimately what sort of price tag you'd expect us to put on him. In addition to that, just sort of let me know how you're doing. Hope you're having a nice day. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't yet. That's always massively appreciated. Appreciated? Appreciated. Or even become a channel member. It's 99p, and that all goes to Prostate Cancer UK, which is an incredible cause. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you later. ta -ra. Also, my first day using a power washer and I managed to injure myself. I managed to wash like the side of my finger off, which was great. <sighs> See you later.